the Gemara has an expression, Kisuma Baruba, like the blind man goes into a ditch. I'm following, like, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. But anyway, as long as it's working out, it's fine. How come I'm, I'm, I don't see you? Well, when we stop talking, hi, we see you. When we stop oh. talking, you know, we... Um... Get out. Okay, so I'm not going to be concerned. I'm back. Okay. Okay, I'd like to start. We started yesterday, but it's very minimal. Uh, page Kuf, Mumbo. The line begins with what Big Israel. And the Rebbe started talking about the principle of Kiddush Hashem that is uniquely present by the Jewish you know, person, by the Jewish Nishom. And why did that, what's the context here? Why did that come up? <clears throat> we started talking about Amuna. In Amunah, we started saying Amunah is based on sight. And then the Rebbe says that really it is superior to sight. Because in sight, there is also different madrigas, as we discussed yesterday. You can see from inside, you can see from outside. And the similar Indian, the Rebbe says, in the principle of Masli Chosi, that the Neshama Lamaila sees the Inyan of Alokus is also an experience of sight. And sight is not an absolute relationship. It could be from up close and from, from, from a distance. Whereas a Muna, this is what I'm Muna is the Kul of the Shop. These words we repeated maybe a hundred times. I really become the show with the line before the line I mentioned before. The human is equal by all. Therefore, Mahuna cannot be sourced in sight because sight has variations. At the end of this line, I think it's a Bukhulu Mishobi, it says, From this Madrid, this which is higher than sight, higher than mazel. As we're going to discuss, this is the actual presence of the Lakus in the Nishom. Umizehu, everybody has a place, Umizehu, from this divine presence in the Nishom. Please understand the difference. It's not a divine observation. It's an actual divine presence in the Nishan. From this, Yehokoya Kiddush Hashem. This is where the Koya of Kiddush Hashem is coming from. Sheyesh Yisrael, which is, that is present by you. We discussed the principle of Kiddush Hashem yesterday, and I'd like to review it again. Kiddush Hashem, conjures up the, 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 the thought of Mesira Snefesh. Usually when I say Kiddush Hashem means a person gives up his life, Mesira Snefesh. And yet, the Rebbe chooses to use the word Kiddush Hashem instead of Mesira Snefesh. The difference between Kiddush Hashem and Mesira Snefesh is Mesira Snefesh means giving up on one's life. Rahman al the person is tested and is forced and is, and is, so to speak, his peace of mind is completely disturbed. He may say, I don't want to live anymore. 
life is not worth all that struggle. Which is also in the sense of Mishiva's Nefesh. Kiddush Hashem is a completely different principle. Kiddush Hashem is not giving up on life. Kiddush Hashem is a positive approach to life. A positive approach to, to the significance of life. Making a statement of the holiness of, the, of the Hashem's presence. This is a real koyach. This is a stance that a yid has. This is not giving up on life out of, out of deep frustration. <coughs> Where does that come from? How does one person have that kind of strength to stand up and say, I want to declare Hashem's presence, Hashem's holiness with, with, all, my, with all that I have, even with my life? Where does that come from? This is not from due to a personal experience, but a personal rejection of, of his tortured life. This is a positive stance. He wants to be Mekadosh Hashemai. He wants to declare to the whole world the holiness and the greatness of Hashem. But to do that, one has to have all his faculties with him. One has to have all his principle and his sense of life with him. He wants to declare to the world a principle that is beyond experience. So in order to, be, to recognize this principle, you have to have all your faculties with you, your full life with you. And that is what the Rebbe says. This comes from a high Madrid. And we discussed it the other day. What is the high Madrid? In Madrid? I want to do this again because it's, very, uh, it, it's kind of elusive, because we're not aware of this principle in normal discussion. Normally we speak in terms of the, the, the person's experience, experience the person's <clears throat> desire to be on the right, to do the right thing. Here we're talking about a completely different phenomenon. Kiddush Hashem is not the fulfillment of a person's uh, uh, purpose in life or functional aspect. Kiddush Hashem is Actually, to make Hashem to, to to declare Hashem's presence, not a person's own cognizance of it. Where does a person get even the concept that he wants to declare Hashem's, Hashem's greatness? Normally, a person is involved in his own in his own thought process, his own interests, in his own experiences. Here, all of a sudden, he completely distracts his attention from his personal experience, his personal interest, and he speaks about Hashem. How does he come to call him? Come about Hashem. Did Hashem knock on his door and ask him to talk about him? Well, where is that? Where is that sourced? So this is where we are getting a statement of uh, where is this Kiddush Hashem come from? This is Mizeh. From this, when it says that this, that Emuna comes from a higher Madrid, higher than sight. And we explained what is this higher Madrid referred to. This higher Madrid refers to not the human experience, it refers to the divine presence in his soul. The actual divine presence of himself. Oh, 
using, using the Mishalim, the, the, the Moshal approach. When you speak to someone on the phone, they communicate in any which way. In a letter, whatever it is. It, it could be a very warm and deep communication. You're communicating, utilizing your, your intelligence and your emotion to communicate. This is a very different experience than when you actually meet up with the person, personally. When you meet up the person personally, it's a completely, totally different reality. Then you are really connected to the individual himself, not to his intelligence, not to his qualities, not to his goodness and kindness. It is the, the reality of his presence. This is the meaning that Amuna comes from a Madrege, a high Madrege. Amuna comes from the cognizance and recognition of Hashem's presence, not from the effect of Hashem's presence, the greatness and the beauty that it provides, but the actual presence itself. When a person recognizes the person recognizes that he is in the presence of the Hashem's presence. Then he has the, the approach in terms of his avoida, in terms of his, of his duties in life, to have to maintain this cognizance of Hashem's presence always uh, always vibrant obviously you cannot sit next to a person or talk to a person and forget that you're talking to somebody you can read his letters you can read about him and be distracted but you can't be distracted when you're talking to him directly this is Tantamount of talking to him of being in his presence directly. This is the chart that there is Hashem's presence higher than the moon, higher than sight. Higher than sight means the actual presence. The actual presence, you cannot distract yourself from this presence. In, 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 while you're doing in, in, for a moment, not even for a moment. This is the shot that comes from a higher madrid. And this is why this madrid enables the phenomenon of Kiddush Hashem. If you were sitting with a friend, and somebody comes over and says, Hey, uncle, who is this person that you're sitting, sitting with? Your response will inevitably be, oh, he's my friend. His name is such and so and so, and he's such a wonderful person. All the things that you can, can quickly utter out and, 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 do, and you do this person directly. You're not going to say, hey, forget about him. Not interested right now. You have the reality of the person himself. You introduce the person himself. I want you to meet Yanko. I want you to know that he is a good friend of mine. He's a wonderful person. Whatever you, whatever you bring up in, in those two seconds. But there's a reality that is happening. This is the shot from a higher stance that you have the reality itself that you are talking about, not the effect of his presence. This is what Amuna is sourced to.
Emunah is not a recognition and knowledge and an effect. Emunah is where you, sec- you, you recognize the presence, the divine presence directly with you. Thus, this, as the Rebbe says, this ultimately brings about in a person's sense of reality, the principle of Kiddush Hashem. This reality which I am now experiencing, I want it to be known, I want to declare it's, it's good. It's just like the most of, of, of a friend. If you see him with a friend and somebody asks you who this friend is, you will tell him all the good things about him. Okay. This is what the Rebbe says is the Koya Kiddush Hashem. Kiddush Hashem again means that a Yid goes out for the purpose of declaring to the world of Hashem's presence and Hashem's greatness. That can only be affected in a person when he actually experiences the presence of Hashem's presence. Not when he knows it in the Seich, in Afsir. At the end of that line, I begin to word be Yisrael. At the very end of that line. This is a very important principle that we're going, going into. We are there respecting this cognizance, this recognition, this knowledge that a person is ready to go to Kiddush Hashem because he's a, he is aware of Hashem's presence. However, even though he's aware of Hashem's presence and he is interested in his connection to it, he's still beheaded. He still can see, which means he does not understand, he recognizes it in his Seichel and Midas. He just knows of its presence. His Seichel is not able to discern and understand what this is about. He has a, a deep I have an affection to it, draw to it, but he doesn't know what. What is so great about it? He's drawn to it, but he doesn't know what. Okay, now we continue further at the end of that line that begins with the Miso. We are there for this purpose. There is the principle of Bechira. Bechira means the choice. Every Yid has this Bechira, this choice. What choice? To bring forth this Ahava, this cognizance, to bring it forth in full revelation, full recognition, from a stira, from a hidden, from a, from a hidden state. This we call Bechir, choice. The union that the person has an internal draw, an Ahaba, is not, is not up to, to choice. This is a direct response of his Neshama. He, he, he hears about Neshama, his Neshama automatically comes forth to connect to. But to bring this Cognizance, this recognition of the greatness of the of the, of the course. He brings it forth, bring it forth that it should be understood in his own sake, and he should appreciate it in his own means. No, but it should not be something that he is aware of, but it should be something that becomes his own reality. That's a completely different different stands in different situation.
to give us, again, an illustration of that difference. If you see a person from a distance, and you ask at a distance, who is this person? And then someone next to you explains to you, well, this person is a wonderful person. His name is such and such, and he comes from this and this place. I know him very well. Would you like to meet him? He said, of course I'd like to meet him. Will you then say, why do you have to meet him for? You see him, you see him right there. He says, no, no, I want to meet him. I want to meet him face to face. I want to communicate with him. And I, I want to experience his presence. Not enough that I see him from a distance. I see what he looks like. And I see how he behaves. I want to meet him personally. I want to greet him. I want to know him. I want him to know me. This is the union of connecting. This connecting level, this connected stance, approach, is not an imperative. You can see the person and know about the person from a distance. And you have somebody explain to you what this person is now doing. Here you have the Bechira, so to speak. It's up to you to say, you know, I want to get to know him person, person directly, or I'm, I'm satisfied to, to, see, to see him from a distance, to see what he looks like, how he behaves. I don't need to meet him personally. This is what the Rebbe says. There's an Ahaba Musatarus. And Ahaba that is incorporated into the shop to all the course. And this Ahaba is such that he actually appreciates and to the extent that he is ready to give his life up in order to declare the greatness of this of, of, of this eloquence. But then there's another, another step. Yes, he recognizes its greatness. It's an internal recognition, it's a knowledge, so to speak, and concealed, a subtle knowledge in him. To the extent that he's ready to stand up and sacrifice his life for its, for the, for the clear, it's, 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 it's greatness. That's sufficient? So he says, no, it's another step. Another step is, it's not enough that I know its greatness. I want to meet it face to face. I want to know it on a personal level. Not I to know about it, but I want to experience its presence directly. This experiencing, this draw to experience it directly, that is not an imperative. Like we said in the example of, of more than a bad person. You know him, you know him, but you don't have a face-to-face a, a -face meeting with him. This is what the letter says. At this stage, this is what's called this the Bechir. Every he has the Bechir. He chooses to stay at a distance or to come close. Coming close is a special Bechira, a choice in a person. It's not imperative. To know him as such, know Hashem, is an imperative. A person cannot live in the world without knowing Hashem. But to come close on a personal basis, this is not an imperative. This is where there is the Bechira. A person chooses to let me explain why this is Bechir. Because once you know the neighbors on the course, in your own Seichel and Midas, that minimizes your relationship to the world. Because that becomes your reality. 
you're no longer exclusively interested in what's going on in, in the world of the experience. Now you're in, different, in a different reality. To give up your worldly experience and to identify with this different divine reality, that is what's called Bechira. Because that is, you're actually giving up something. You're not just gaining some knowledge. But you're stepping away from the world, from the, the worldly reality and stepping it in, in, into divine reality. And this is where there is a chiyadini from the chiyadini. And then this inside. Ve'azeh yesh b'chira b'chalachami yisrael. Regarding this step, this position, this place, this level, there's a b'chira, there's a choice in every minute. What is b'chira consist? L'ha'itziyo b'yizgalos me'hastir. To bring forth this ahava, to be revealed, me'hastir, or from a concealed from the concealed state. Concealed state is also a uh, But it's concealed, it's subtly contained in, inside. It doesn't interfere with your daily chores, with your daily activity. But uh, the Yid has a he has a choice, has the ability to bring it forth from this subtle concealed state. She that it should shine, gam, that this presence, the divine presence, should shine also in his seichel and in his brain and in his heart. And we, this, we, I, mean, I promise last, last time, we try to get into these terms, particularly. The term yoyir, it should shine. What is the shine aspect? It should light up. Besichle yomeichu believe. The inference of the word yoyir, it should shine, is we, as we explain, we, we experience light in our own physical sense. We can know the physical world by all kinds of different form experiences, by touch, by taste. I feel cold, hot, comfortable, all kinds of different effects of our presence in the world. These are all experienced experience effects. Then there is the phenomenon of light. Light. The difference between light and all other experiences is that light speaks to the person without experiencing that which you are, which you, which, which shines to. You don't experience it. You just see its reality. You recognize its reality without experiencing it. To recognize a reality without experiencing it requires a sense of meaning, of value, beyond that which is effectuated by, by experience.
like we gave the, gave the marshal before, you meet, a, you meet a person, you meet a person, you see how he behaves, you see him and so on, what it looks like and so forth. Then you say, no, that's not enough for me, what I'm observing. I want to actually meet him personally. This desire to meet him personally is an interest in knowing, knowing not what he looks like and how he, how he behaves, but to get a sense and understand what is the, in, the make, makeup of this person. What is the power of his life? What is the power of his activity? What is the source that makes him, makes him go, makes him be? This knowing the source of what makes, makes him be is, is something which has not to do with you personally. This is not due to your personal experience that you want to know. It's just knowing the truth of it. You really want to know this person. This is what we're saying over here. That a person has knowledge of Hashem to the point of a point of kids Hashem. But then there is a bhira. He says, the fact that I know Hashem to the extent I'm ready to be to go and kill Hashem is not efficient, sufficient. I want to be imbued by it directly in a manner that has nothing to do with my with my functional level of in my current current state. I want to meet up with it, so to speak. This meeting up is, a, is, is not a, an imperative. I want to get into his depth, even though it has nothing to do with my practical life. Just want to note. This is what the Rebbe says. There, there is there's a bhir. You can go through life knowing Hashem and doing all the good things without coming to a personal knowledge. To know, to have a personal knowledge of it, this is already a, a personal choice. This personal choice is not without its challenges. Because in order to have a personal knowledge of, of Lakut, so Hashem, you have to minimize your personal, at, at the moment, at the minimum, minimize your personal knowledge of world. These are two completely different realities. World is no longer a fundamental reality. But Lakut becomes a fundamental reality. You have to give up that which you are accustomed to, rec to recognize and to live with the reality of the world, but to give it up and, and, and identify a new kind of reality, that your reality is Hashem's presence. This is a matter of choice. You choose, Ayid has a choice to identify for himself what is the reality in which he functions? Not what he believes and, and how he's going to behave. What is the, the fundamental being, existence? What's existence mean to him? As a choice. To say existence means to me Hashem's presence. Or existence means to me the world, the in reality. This is given, this is the Bechira. Why is it the Bechira? Because this has not come via an intellectual and emotional process. 
for this, you have to make a, a, a concerted decision, a, a, a clear decision. You're stepping away from here and you're going this way. Because you will be defining the fundamental reality in which you function. Let us talk about the concept, the principle of what we mean by fundamental reality. We do not generally pay attention to this fundamental reality. We give cognizance to special events That we, are, that we recognize and identify with this one. Fundamental reality is a completely different thing. Fundamental reality is that which is experienced, that which is recognized without knowing. I don't have to know that there is a world. That, that, that is not even taken for granted. That is the reality in which I function. That I know before I know anything. Everything that I'm going to know is a derivative of that knowledge. If I recognize a street, yeah. this street is present where? Yeah. On the earth. It's not present on, 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 on Mars. It has a real presence. Okay, I know why. I lost sight here. Hello? Hi. Yes. Oh, you're back. Okay. We can hear you. you came, I, didn't see, I didn't see anybody. Oh, we see you. You see me? Yep. All right. So this is a complete Again, I don't see you. I don't know what's going on right now. We see you just fine. What? We see you very clearly. Now I see you. Oh, when you stop talking, I don't see you. Is that, is that what happens? Yep, that's what happens. Okay, now I see you. <laughs> All right. So this is the meaning, this is what the Rebbe says. There's the Bechira to yet to know it. Even though this is the reality, this is the truth itself. Yet, there's a Bechira step, step that is really up to you, the choice, the choice of the individual. If this is the truth, why is it a choice? Every person wants to know what the truth is. Nobody wants to know that which is not true, wants to know only that which is true. If this is true, why is it a, a choice? This is what we discuss and the rabbi says. No, this is a, 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 here it's a choice. Why? Because the knowing this in of course, the way we described it till now, does not interfere which you know in the world. Does not minimize your, uh, your awareness and your participation in the world at all. Good Shabbos. You gotta Shabbos go to work. Shabbos. Going to work. Uh, what? Going to work. Going to work? Where do you go to work? Where, these days where you work? From, from home. From home. All right, you know what? Give me another two seconds. I want to finish this. No, we can continue. It's not nine o'clock. Uh, we have another time. Right, it's still ten to nine. Okay. Good Shabbos. All right, good Shabbos. So here we say to know this truth is a matter of choice. 
How is knowing the truth a matter of choice? Knowing the truth is, is, is a, there's only one, one way, one thing to know. You can only know that which is true. Why is this a choice? Because here we're coming to a point where knowing this truth is not by finding out about it, but you, you trans, you're transferring your fundamental knowledge to that knowledge. This is when I started to talk about what fundamental knowledge means. I started talking to him before he was interrupted. <laughs> you know, whatever we see in the world, anything, a house, a tree, a street, anything, all of these things and all things that we know in the world, we know their specific the design a specific stands and specific purpose. But at the same time, we also know that they are contained in the, in the world. There's a container. They all describe what the world is about. Even though you're not interested in knowing the world, you're interested to know that particular street particular house, particular person. But the reality of that which you know is dependent on your recognition that there is a bigger world, that there is a reality of world. This is what gives reality to everything else that you know. A person is real because he's in the world and the world is real, so therefore the person is real. A house is real because it's in the world. Everything is like that. The, the, the primary reality is that is the overall reality. That which encompasses everything. That which allows everything else to be. That's the primary reality. The primary reality in our experience, in our mind, is our worldly observation, our worldly experience. Let's take this to a deeper step. You're putting on film in, on your arm and on your head. This film, once you put it on your hand, arm and on your head, it stays there. It stays on your head, it stays on your arm. Let's understand this, what I'm trying to point out. You, it stays on your hand because you put it on your head. It stays on your head because it's put on, put on your head. It stays there, not because it's in the world. That you completely, um, ignore. Although the truth is, this is what makes it possible for you to put it on your head because your head is a, a reality in the world and your hand is a reality in the world. But you are not paying attention to that, to that realm of it, to that, to that dimension. You pay attention to dimension how it pertains to you, your person. Let us now project on the basis of what we are learning that when a person puts on feel on his own, he fully recognizes that this arm is a divine creation and it's maintained by divine support. 
completely different experience. It's a, a divine gift to him for the arm that the Quran to be able to find feel like that. In truth, is that is a, that is in fact what it is. Nobody owns the piece of the world that he occupies. He is given privilege to use it to be there. It's the thing, the choice of the human, of the person to focus in and to recognize the truth of the environment in which it functions. This is the Bechira. The Bechira is that the level of Kiddush Hashem that completely ignores his own meetings, that identifies only with Hashem's presence, should be His fundamental reality. He is not in the world the presence, he's in the divine presence. The Rebbe said, gives him a worldly presentation, but this is the Rebbe, the Rebbe a, a, a locus that he's related to, not to the world. This is what's called Bechira. Person is given a choice to do that because in order to go there, he has to. It's Mesira Snavish, really. You have to completely step away from your worldly orientation and it, and retranslate it and re, 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 replace it with a divine orientation. So that when you put on feel on your arm, it's not your arm; it's the arm that Rebbe is currently providing you with. This is why this is a Bechira, because this requires a complete retranslation of one's own self-orientation, self-knowledge. So that, you know, Mesir Snefesh is no longer a Mesir Snefesh stance. You know, which material which is out of the ordinary. It becomes something commonplace. Constantly he's in a state of material snapshot. This is what we learn in Chesidus, that tzaddikim, tzaddik, that in every breath he is Returning his soul to his creator. Konishima Onishima. With every breath, he acknowledges Hashem's presence. With every breath, he acknowledges Hashem's gift of this breath and that breath and that breath. That is truly virtually impossible for the average person. And clearly, even if he tries for it, 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 it has to be a stance, a, a step, a, a concerted effort. Bechir, even though it's true, he knows it's true. Doesn't happen because he knows it's true.
this is what the Rebbe says. I'm reading the words in, in, in the Maimon on that line, and then and we'll continue. For this, there is a Bechira, there's a choice. Which Bechira means, the word Bechira, this explains, Bechira means a choice that comes from the a essence from the Mishon. Bechira is not a choice between two experiences. Bechira is, where do I stand? What is my reality? That's Bechira. Never he is a Bechira. What is my reality? And he has a Bechira to bring forth from the concealed state of the Neshama or Mesir Snappers to be his galas, it should be something that I experience on a continuous basis. Shayoyir, so that it would shine, Gambe Sikhla, your Mecha Belim. And here now we can talk about the effect, the, the meaning of the word Shayoyir, it should shine. The word Shiyoyer comes in here because we are talking about something that is totally intangible. There is no worldly presence to it. There's exclusively a divine presence. Hashem is giving that, that knowledge to us and that reality to us. This is not something which is part and parcel of a worldly experience, or the worldly presence. The means by which Hashem is giving it to us is by giving us the opportunity and giving and providing us with the ability to experience its beauty, its greatness. And to experience it's true. This is called oil. We only see it on the oil level rather than on a tangible worldly level. It is within the choice of every person. It sounds a little bit far-fetched, but nonetheless, the Bible says it is within the choice of every person that he can bring forth this truth from the way it is contained in the Neshama, that it should be known to him on the practical and a functional level in his seichel, in his mind and in his heart. And that will come, comes in the form of yoyer and a certain kind of shining of light, because this is not an intangible, this is an intangible experience. You know it not by touch, you, you just know this truth. But it's a yoyer. It is within the choice of every individual for it to bring forth the truth of his nisham that it should shine, it should express itself, it should be recognized in his seichel and his moyach and his heart. Okay? The Rebbe says, so, I don't know to what extent we each, each one on his own level, can actually recognize that this is, a, a kind of, so to speak, a possibility a virtual reality. But nonetheless, the Rebbe says, this is, that's why it says Bechira. Bechira means this is where you give up, you change from one reality to a completely different reality. And this is where it becomes Kala with an Ishwari. You, you return the Nishwami to the Mabashi. And this is possible in the Eid, as we're going to be going to see later. This is possible in the Eid because of the order of the shine of the reflection of Adam Kadmain, 
that is contained, that, that in which the Shoma is contained. This is not part of the creation of the world. This is part of Godliness itself in the, in the, in the verse. All right. Well, I should have got to this point and uh, we'll pick up from here, Mr. Shem, next time. Yes, it will be Sunday. Have a great day. Sunday, 8 o'clock, eight fifteen. Uh, I believe so. 8 yeah. o'clock. Have uh, a good time.